The SCRS new hire report um, can be used to create a report for verification of a new, new employee reporting, as well as create an STRS new hire report submission file that can be uploaded to the STRS website. Um, one thing that you have to keep in mind is when you're creating the new hire um, submission file for STRS new hire, that file will only contain any employees that are new employees or employees that had a lapse in service and you need are re-reporting re them. Um, any employee who is a rehired retiree must be filed um, manually on the SCRS website. Um, we cannot uh, file those on the submission file. There is some criteria that needs to be met in order for an, STR, or an employee to be on the STRS new hire submission file. Uh, the first criteria is on the payroll item, the 450 payroll item, the new employee flag must be set, basically meaning it must be checked. So if I go into this employee, you can see that the new employee uh, field has a check mark. So this employee should get included on my new hire, STRS new hire uh, file. The other criteria comes from the position record. And the first uh, piece of information that needs to be pulled in comes from the start date on the position record. So the start date can be within 180 days of the current date. So six months before this current date, be the, higher, the start date on this record. The other part, piece of criteria that needs to be met is the retirement code has to be set to the STRS value in order for the employee to be included on the STRS new, new hire report. So once all of that criteria has been met, we could go out to the reports tab, go down to STRS reporting, go to the, uh, the sub reports and go to the STRS new hire report. And in here, we have the report title that can be modified if you desire, you know, maybe you want to put a date in something like that. If not, you can just leave the default name of STRS new hire report. Then we have the capability of creating, generating the report, which is going to just let us look at it, make sure all employees that we have listed are actually on the report. And you can see I have one employee out here right now that's going to be reported. So I could just go to this generate report tab, create the report, and then I'll open it and view it and make sure that that employee information is included on this, on the, on this report. You'll notice um, there's SSN address, birth date, gender, and the first day on the payroll. All this data that's on the report is included in the submission file. There are a couple other fields that are included, but currently those are not on this report. So we can go back in and now if the report looks correct, we have the option of either generate, generating the submission file and then going out to the STRS website and uploading it, or we could just go in in one step and create the submission file and submit it to STRS all at one time by choosing that option. I'll just go in and create the file so we can look at it. And you can see, the formatting of the file and all the data that's included on the file. So then I, what I could do is I could go in and as soon as I save that file, I'd have to go in and choose the file. So find that file where it went. Oops, hold on here. There it is. And then once a file is uploaded, I could go to the submit uploaded file to STRS and click on that, and it would automatically upload that new hire STRS new hire report out to the STRS website. And now you'll notice that my STRS new hire employee that was listed is gone. That's because we included them on that file. And then also, if I go back out to the payroll item, that 450 payroll item for that employee, that new employee flag should be unchecked. We'll go out and look at it, and it is. 
So basically, this, this employee has been reported to STRS as a new hire. If there's any further questions regarding this, we have information out in the, in the documentation under reports, STRS reports, and then the subcategory STRS new hire reporting. Um, thank you and have a great day.